Audi delivers a much more credible offering to customers in the sector for full battery large SUVs with this Q8 e-tron. It looks more sophisticated than its predecessor and is with greater range, a new charging system and an eco trimmed cabin. Most customers will want the sleeker sportback version, but here we look at this car in more practical SUV form. Audi doesn't like its products falling behind the technological curve, but its very first EV, the large e-tron SUV, quickly did following its introduction in 2018. Heavyweight, clunky looks and batteries that weren't large enough or dense enough all counted against the e-tron and its slightly sleeker showroom stablemate, the e-tron Sportback. More than a facelift was needed. More than a facelift is what we've got in the shape of this car, the Q8 e-tron. The fundamentals here are the same as those of the old e-tron SUV. And you can still have a swoopier sportback version, which we've covered in a separate review. It's the standard SUV body shape we focus on here. The advanced tri-motor powertrain that featured on top of the range e-tron S models in the previous lineup has been carried over as well to the meaner looking SQ8 flagship model we've chosen to test here. More significant is that the twin electric motor quattro variants further down the range offer a much greater driving distance between charges of their much bigger batteries. Plus there are slight styling and trim changes too. Want to know more? Then you'll need the usual comprehensive car and driving review. The reason why not enough people bought the e-tron in its original form wasn't hard to fathom, driving range. The base 50 version could only take you 212 miles, less than some EV super minis. Forget all that now, as part of this Q8 update, the offending 71 kilowatt hour battery of that old car was junked in favour of the much gutsier 95 kilowatt hour one of the base Q850 e-tron model that takes the car, a still not exemplary, 281 miles. If you want to do better, the pricier Q855 e-tron variant your dealer will prefer to persuade you into has a huge 114 kilowatt hour battery capable of 330 miles between charges which is much more like it. Both models still have a motor on each axle, hence the Quattro four-wheel drive system designation. The rear one, though, has been improved, now with 14 coils instead of the previous 12, which pushes power up to 340 PS in the Q850 e-tron, 27 PS more than before. The Q855 e-tron has the same 664 newton meter torque figure, but serves up 408 PS. If you want more, you'll be steered towards the top tri-motor SQ8 model we're trying here. Basically, the old e-tron S, which means you get an extra motor at the back. With that, there's 503 PS and an enormous 973 newton meters of torque, powering the car to a top speed of 130 miles an hour. Across the range, sprightly performance depends on selection of a dynamic drive mode that rather decimates the quoted range figures. To get closer to those, you'll need to keep more regularly in the drive select system's auto, comfort or efficiency settings. Air suspension is standard with all Q8 e-tron variants and the ride height can be adjusted with the efficiency mode lowering it by 27 millimetres and off-road mode, yes there is one, raising the car by 52 millimetres. The steering still Q5 derived, while much of the suspension uses Q7 bits. As with other electric cars, the low center of gravity should help in reducing body roll. You might not think the styling changes made here over the old e-tron model to be that dramatic, but they've been enough to usefully benefit the aerodynamics, which on this SUV version, have improved from 0.28 to 0.26 CD. That has less to do with the cosmetic updates and more to do with the new underbody spoilers you can't see mounted under the MLB Evo platform to direct air away from the wheels. 
This top SQ8 e-tron variant gets a host of cosmetic S specific bodywork add-ons, including bespoke front and rear bumpers. In profile, you'll note this Q8 e-tron SUV's boxier silhouette. Unlike the Sportback variant, it also comes with roof rails. Wheel sizes vary from 20 inches right up to the 22 inch rims we have here. The Smarter Grille, illuminated on top models, also has electronically controlled cooling ducts and is set within a reprofiled bumper. The standard LED matrix headlamps gain new functions and feature Audi's clever digital light system on this top Vorsprung spec variant. The tail lamps have been revised too, above another restyled bumper. As for what you can't see, well, as usual, with any Q8 e-tron, there's no EV-specific chassis, but instead a modified version of the conventional MLB platform that all the company's larger models use. You'll find less that's new inside, but less needed doing there. Audi insists it's different though, primarily in its eco-friendliness. Carpets, like the sound deadening material, are made from recycled fibres. The seatbelt buckles are moulded from reused automotive plastic waste. And where microfiber upholstery features, it's sourced from recycled plastic bottles. All of it supporting Audi's claim that this is a completely carbon neutral vehicle. Otherwise, not much at all has changed as part of the Q8 e-tron update, which means this cabin probably won't feel as futuristic as in a rival BMW iX, Mercedes EQE SUV, or even Audi's own e-tron GT Quattro. But then it wouldn't do because all those cars are clean sheet designs based on bespoke EV platforms. This one, as we've been saying, is rather less EV unique underneath, so perhaps it's not surprising that... At first glance, it feels just like any other large Audi to sit in up front, mainly because of the familiar three-screen format, with upper and lower ones on the centre stack, respectively 10.1 and 8.6 inches in size, and Audi's usual 12.3-inch virtual cockpit display facing you through the now-restyled three-spoke steering wheel. This SQ8 variant gets an extra, more focused e-tron sport layout to add to the two usual layout options, classic and sport. A wraparound trimming arc envelops the outer perimeter of the e-tron branded dash. The fascia design with the different architecture it needs to be able to sweep out and incorporate these optional virtual mirror screens. Also rather different is this wide open centre console between the seats, which of course on an electric car like this doesn't have to accommodate a bulky transmission tunnel. So the brand has instead created this multi-faceted compartment to fill the space, a storage area which looks like it should be lidded but isn't, and which rests on open sidewalls intended to lend to it the feel of a light, sleek sculpture. An acquired taste is this unusual gear selector operated by a handrest which appears to float above the console and is activated by a one-touch action conducted with either thumb or index finger. But the leather-stitched seats are superbly comfortable, especially the special S-Sport seats of this top SQ8, and position you fairly loftily. Let's take a look in the rear. Now, with this SUV body shape, entry is a little easier than with the Sportback version. And once inside, this SUV model gives you 14 millimetres more headroom, which will help six footers considerably. With either body style, inevitably, you'll be much less comfortable if there are three of you and you're stuck in the middle. Shoulder room with a trio of adults wouldn't actually be too bad, but the middle seat is narrow and has a stiff backrest. At least there's no prominent central transmission tunnel to impede you, though. Just above it are twin vents, a 12-volt port and twin USB-C ports as well. There are also rear controls for the four-zone climate control system that lesser Q8 e-tron models lack. We'll finish as usual with a look out back. Now, with this SUV body style, the powered tailgate rises to reveal a decently sized 660 litre boot. That's 45 litres bigger than the alternative sportback body shape. There's also a useful underfloor storage area, 
Bright silver tie-down floor points and this impractically covered silver boot sill also feature. Fold down the rear bench, which folds conveniently in a 40-20-40 split, and 1,637 litres of capacity is freed up. That's 70 litres more than with the SQ8 Sportback e-tron body shape. That's not quite all, because as with all Q8 e-trons, you get an extra little carriage compartment at the front where the engine would normally be, though it's mostly taken up by the charging leads. You could put a laptop or a small bag there. At the time of launch and of our test in autumn 2023, prices were starting at around £68,000 for the base Q850 e-tron Quattro model with its 95 kilowatt hour battery, but you'll probably want to stretch to the Q855 e-tron with its larger 114 kilowatt hour battery, which priced from around £78,000. Both the 50 and the 55 are offered with a choice of four trim levels, Sport, S-Line, Black Edition and Vorsprung. The top SQ8 e-tron we're trying here is only offered in either Black Edition or Vorsprung trim and priced from around £97,000 as we filmed. Those prices all apply to the SUV body shape we're looking at here. With all these models, you'll be offered the option of the swoopier Sportback style for an extra £2,500. Equipment highlights fitted as standard across the range include adaptive air suspension, quattro all-wheel drive and progressive steering. All models also include heated and electrically adjustable front seats, a windscreen with acoustic glazing, the Audi virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen, keyless go, keyless entry and two-zone automatic air conditioning, including remote preconditioning. This enhanced system now allows customers to heat or cool the car and activate seat heating and ventilation and window heating all via the My Audi app. A raft of safety equipment also features as standard, including a rear view camera, lane departure warnings, camera traffic sign recognition, Audi's pre-sense front and basic safety systems, and a parking setup with 360 degree sensors. Matrix LED headlamps are standard across the lineup with digital matrix LEDs reserved for top spec Vorsprung versions. On to options. Now, as on any EV, before you start spending any additional cash, budget first for the installation of a charging wall box in your garage, if you obviously haven't got one already. Audi has a compact e-tron charging system consisting of a control unit and a Type 2 Mo2 cable, and it can be fitted by the brand's installation partner, Podpoint. Spend £150 more, and you can specify a neat wall-mounting bracket for it to sit on. And if you want faster battery replenishment, put a aside £1,750 for the optional more powerful 22 kilowatt onboard AC charger. You might wonder about adding these futuristic virtual door mirrors, which are standard only with this Vorsprung spec. These replace conventional door mirrors and project little images onto OLED screens mounted on each front door. They certainly look sophisticated, but not everyone likes the way they work in practice. Looking down to a door-mounted screen rather than an exterior door mirror takes a bit of getting used to. Try before you buy, as always is our advice, especially since for this one extra, Audi charges a cool £1,750. Across the range, as with all Q8 e-trons, a raft of safety equipment features as standard. And as you'd expect in this day and age, there's an autonomous braking system included in that roster. Ingolstadt calls it setup Audi Presense front and basic. And like other similar packages, this one scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive and will automatically brake the car to try and avoid them if you don't respond to warnings. The basic element of this system refers to the way that it will also instantly act to give you the maximum chance of survival if an unavoidable collision is detected, tightening seat belts, closing windows and even shutting the panoramic roof if one's been fitted. As you might expect for the money being asked here, there's also a lane departure warning setup 
that works between 37 and 124 miles an hour, issuing a warning if you drift out of your lane on the motorway and applies subtle steering assistance to ease you back to where you should be. There's also distance warning, which alerts you if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. High beam assist, which automatically dips your headlights for you at night and rest recommendation, which alerts you if drowsiness is detected in your driving reactions. Top spec Vorsprung versions like this one add two key packs, the Tor pack, which gives you emergency assist where the car will cut in if you get taken ill at the wheel, swerve assist, turn assist, adaptive cruise control and adaptive cruise assist with active lane assist. There's also the City Assist Pack, which adds a lane change assistant, great for automatic highway lane changes. Audi Presense Rear, to brace the car for a rear end collision. Exit Warning, which warns occupants if there's an approaching vehicle when they're about to open their doors. And for when coming out of junctions, Cross Traffic Assist Front and Rear. It's all very reassuring. <music> Like its two German premium brand rivals, Audi still hasn't switched to an 800 volt electrical infrastructure. For its EVs, the lower tech 400 volt system continuing here. We gave you the mileage range figures in our driving section. These stats enhanced not only by larger battery sizes, but also by a 20% increase in battery density and a revised stacking process within the battery structure with altered electrode placement. The new more efficient electric rear motor and the car's now more slippery aerodynamics also help, of course. But the usual EV downsides remain. Electric cars are going to be able to go considerably further once someone designs a battery that doesn't weigh them down like a brick. Even the smaller of this Q8 e-tron's two available batteries, that with 95 kilowatt hours, 89 kilowatt hours of which are usable, tips the scales at 700 kilograms, which means it accounts for nearly a third of the weight of the whole car. Anyway, you'll want to know about this model's new charging system. The base Q850 e-tron variant offers charging performance of up to 150 kilowatts, with the 114 kilowatt hour battery of the Q855 e-tron or the SQ8, 106 kilowatt hours of which is usable, charging performance rises to 170 kilowatts. Either way, at a public fast charger, your e-tron should charge from 10 to 80 percent in around half an hour. For a home wall box or a public AC charger, the Q8 e-tron charges at up to 11 kilowatts. And if that's not enough, Audi offers an optional AC charging upgrade of up to 22 kilowatts. Under ideal conditions, the Q850 e-tron can completely charge in around nine hours and 15 minutes on an 11 kilowatt power source and in around four hours and 45 minutes on a 22 kilowatt power source. The Q855 e-tron's larger battery will charge in around 11 hours and 30 minutes at 11 kilowatts and six hours at 22 kilowatts. Insurance groupings range from 44E to 50E. A completely new design would normally be needed for the kind of seismic step forward Audi's taken here. Instead, we've been given a remarkably far-reaching facelift, which has been enough to make this Q8 e-tron the kind of credible alternative to a BMW iX or a Mercedes EQE SUV that its predecessor could never have been. It's still a pity that you have to stretch up to the pricier 55 variant to get really decent operating range, and most customers will probably continue to prefer the more avant-garde sportback version of this car. Still, if you need the practicality of this SUV body style and you can stretch to the larger 114 kilowatt hour battery, the Q8 e-tron is now a real contender in this class and a much better showcase for the unique tri-motor technology in this SQ8 model, engineering that rivals still haven't got near to replicating. That's very Vorsprung Dirk technique. Fortunately, now the rest of the range is too.